Welcome to Concept in Medicine. Today we are going to be looking at Cardiovascular System Part 1. And in this tutorial, we'll be looking at the structure and function of the heart. Let's begin. One thing you should know is that the heart is considered as a woman pump, meaning that it pumps blood to every part of the woman body, including itself. And the heart is made up of four chambers. So you can see we have one, two, three, four. What are these chambers? The chambers are two atria, that's the right atrium and the left atrium. Then two ventricles, that is the right ventricle and the left ventricle. And if you observe closely, you realize that the two atria usually empty their contents into the ventricles. So let's take the first one, that is the right atrium. The right atrium collects blood via the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava. Then the question goes, what are the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava? The superior vena cava is formed from the union of the right and left brachiocephalic veins, also known as the innominate veins. And the superior vena cava drains blood from the head and the upper part of the body into the right atrium. If you take the inferior vena cava, it's formed from the union of the right and left common iliac veins. And the inferior vena cava drains blood from the lower portion of the body into the right atrium. Now, once the blood is drained into the right atrium, what happens next? It flows through this valve. This valve here is known as the triscopic valve, or based on its location, it's located between the right atrium and the right ventricle. And it is called the triscopic valve because it has three caps or three leaflets. And as you can see, blood flows from the right atrium through the triscopic valve into the right ventricle. You will notice that when you go to the left side of the heart, where we have the left atrium and the left ventricle, blood drains from the left atrium into the left ventricle through the mitral valve or what we also call the bicuspid valve. It is called the bicuspid valve because it has two caps or two leaflets. And based on the location, that is between the left atrium and the left ventricle, it is also known as the left atrioventricular valve. Now, if you look at the ventricles, once they collect their blood, you will notice that the right ventricle will drain the blood into the lungs through the pulmonary artery. So the pulmonary vein drains blood, which is oxygenated from the lungs into the left atrium, which further drains it via the mitral valve into the left ventricle. And the left ventricle pumps the blood through the aorta into the system. So if you observe carefully, you realize that the right atrium drains deoxygenated blood from the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava, and then that deoxygenated blood is drained via the triscopic valve into the right ventricle. And the right ventricle pumps the deoxygenated blood via the pulmonary artery into the lungs where it is oxygenated in the alveoli where gaseous exchange takes place. Because of that, the lung is considered as an organ of gaseous exchange. And in the alveoli, carbon dioxide will diffuse out of the blood and oxygen will diffuse into the blood, binding to the hemoglobin to form oxyhemoglobin. Then we'll call that an oxygenated blood. Once oxygenated, the pulmonary vein will drain the oxygenated blood from the lungs into the left atrium. Then the left atrium drains the blood through the mitral valve into the left ventricle. Then the left ventricle will contract to pump the blood through the aorta into the system. So in that case, you will notice that the right side of the heart, that's the right atrium and the right ventricle, both have deoxygenated blood in their chambers, whilst the left side of the heart, that's the left atrium and the left ventricle, have oxygenated blood in their chambers. I hope we've gotten that. The aorta and the pulmonary artery also have valves. That is the aortic valve and the pulmonic valve. And if you look at their shape, their shape looks like half moon. Because of that, collectively, these two valves are referred to as the semi-lunar valves. And as you know, for valves, what do they do? They allow for unidirectional flow of blood to ensure that blood only flows in one direction. 
Now, if you look at the mitral valve and the triscopic valve to ensure that they do not over expand whilst maintaining the unidirectional flow of blood from the atria to the ventricle there is a structure that holds them in place that structure is referred to as the corda tendini corda tendini they are fibrous tissues that hold the mitral valve and the triscopic valves in place to ensure that they do not over expand when they are draining blood from the atria into the ventricles. And the corda tendini are also attached to muscle fibers known as the papillary muscle. And these papillary muscles are insected into the ventricle, specifically continuous with the myocardium. They are insected into the myocardium to anchor the corda tendini and the corda tendini also anchors the triscopid and the mitral valve. The last thing I want us to talk about, if you watch very carefully, so there are two systems of circulation in the human body. You have the pulmonary circulation and the systemic circulation. Now let's take the semi circulation first. Systemic circulation means that it starts from the left ventricle, where the left ventricle pumps oxygenated blood through the aorta into the system where the oxygen gets used up the blood becomes deoxygenated and it's returned via the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava into the right atrium. Then the systemic circulation is completed. So the systemic circulation begins from the left ventricle and ends in the right atrium. That's for the systemic circulation. Now, pulmonary circulation. For the pulmonary circulation, meaning that the right ventricle pumps deoxygenated blood via the pulmonary artery into the lungs where it is oxygenated and it is returned via the pulmonary vein into the left atrium, completing the pulmonary circulation. Pulmonary means lungs. It has to do with the lungs, meaning that oxygenation will be taking place in the lungs. So the pulmonary circulation starts from the right ventricle and ends in the left atrium. The pulmonary circulation begins from the right ventricle and ends in the left atrium. The last thing I want us to look about is the layers of the heart. For the layers of the heart, there are three of them. We have the endocardium, which will form the innermost layer. It's made up of loose connective tissues and simple squamous epithelial tissues. They line the inner part of the heart. And it's similar to the endothelial lining of blood vessels. So we'll call it the endocardium. If you move inner, at the mid portion, you have muscle fibers. We call them the myocardium. The myocardium, which is made up of cardiomyocytes, and sometimes have these involuntary striated muscle fibers. So that will form the middle layer of the heart. Then, if you go to the outermost layer, you are going to have what you call the epicardium. And the epicardium is more of the visceral portion of the pericardium. If we take the pericardium, the pericardium is consists of fibrous tissue, and if you go Inner, you realize that they will have the parietal layer of the pericardium, then you have the serous fluid, then after that you will have the visceral portion of the pericardium. And the visceral portion of the pericardium is what is termed as the epicardium. I hope the structure and the function of the heart in our cardiovascular system, part one, makes sense to you. Kindly make sure to subscribe, share, Leave your comment in the comment box and suggest any concept that you would like to see in my next video. Thank you very much. My name is Dr. Dell and this is Concepts in Medicine. Bye-bye.